Hey everybody, just a couple of quick tips here just to help you get into a good right hand position, okay? Now, really good right hand position is going to help you get really stable. It's going to get you really accurate with your picking. But what it's also going to do is it's going to give you a whole lot of confidence and a lot of comfort, especially in your right hand. There shouldn't be any tension in this hand, especially up here in the thumb, okay? But also down here when you try to disconnect these fingers when you're playing, okay? So the first issue a lot of people have is trying to get these two fingers to stay down. And it's really, really difficult to do. It's hard to train your hand to do it. Some people can, some people can't. Some people just straight up gave up, okay, but don't give up. A lot of people have a floating hand. You definitely don't need that because if you don't have any anchor, you're not going to have any accuracy. But I've seen a lot of pro pickers will have one anchor, okay? A lot of them have two. I have two. But I've seen a lot of guys have a floating pinky. I've seen some guys have a floating ring finger, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I've even seen some guys use their bridge as an anchor. This is a really old Snuffy Smith bridge. I don't know if you can see it in the camera there, but over about, I want to say about 15 years of hard playing, this thing has been a kind of a point of contact. I don't use it as an anchor. You can see from the wear marks on my head that I don't have any finger positions back behind the bridge. I have seen a couple guys use it, as an anchor point. I don't recommend that. It'll take tone out of your instrument. But one thing that is helpful for me back in the day, the old school trick, take a rubber band, hair tie, whatever, and just wrap it right around your fingers <laughs> and try to get these things so they will not come off. If I remember how to wrap a rubber band, It's actually more difficult than you think. There we go. Getting there. And of course, you don't need it to be too tight. But just so that way you can't get your fingers apart. There we go. Okay, I remember doing this when I was just starting out. It's difficult. And it's actually drawing them together. So that way when I put my hand down, there it is. It's staying. Now it's just a little bit off from where I want it to be. So I, of course, I can always adjust how I need to. There, that would probably work out just right. And that's exactly right about how I was training my hand to work when I was starting. And then eventually, maybe after about, <laughs> in my case, two or three months, take it off and it feels natural. Okay, so that's the first old school trick. You can always use the rubber band. Second thing, a lot of people, especially if they're trying to play up here on your neck, you can see where I have my wear mark on my head over the years that my fingers are going to slide right up parallel with my strings and you definitely don't want to get out and you definitely don't want to get under so one thing that helped me take a pencil scotch tape it to your head and you can use it as a guide board so if I put this on here real quick and I've done this for students in the past that have difficulty because once you get past actually having your fingers down as a good anchor and you try to work up and back and back and forth and then you get lost of where to go you can actually use that as a guide board see how i have it taped on there parallel just as a nice little training aid so that way your fingers can slide up and still be in the right position and you can use that to come up and back and forth okay so that also works but probably the best training tool that I ever had, aside from getting smacked up in the head by my old mentor, <laughs> is to prevent what I call a drop wrist. Okay, Now, I've evolved to have it over the years. You can see this with my wear mark where I've had the heel of my hand down on the head, actually touching the head, but this is like an advanced Reno trick. So I don't recommend it for any beginner at all. Okay. But what you want to do is you want to have a wrist that comes off of the head and it should not be any tension in your hand at all, okay? What you want to do to make sure that your, there we go, nope, this way will be better. To make sure your wrist isn't going to drop and actually touch, there we go, that head when you're playing, 
not necessarily killing the tone. This is a loud instrument enough as it is. But if you drop your heel of your hand, or if you drop your wrist, you get a lazy wrist when you're playing, you will actually have a bad angle for your thumb. Okay, so if I put my thumb pick on here real quick, if I play with a dropped wrist, I need to bring my thumb up in order to play, and now all of a sudden I have unnecessary tension here in my finger, or my thumb actually. So it's going to make less accuracy, you get more tired, you get less accurate, and then you get frustrated. Okay, what you want is just a nice natural arch. I keep on turning the wrong way. There we go. A nice natural arch in your wrist so that way your thumb is relaxed and then you can just pull it right in between the strings wherever you need and how do you keep your wrist up or how do you train it there's two ways first one grab yourself a tennis ball stick yourself right up under there under the wrist it'll give you a Ralph Stanley wrist for a little while but that's okay all right you can eventually gravitate to bring either a smaller ball, those um, little dog tennis balls, they're actually the perfect size, or a lacrosse ball. Either one works, or a squash ball, I mean. So this works to keep your wrist up. The second one, which when, you, when you're done working with the tennis ball, all you have to think of is just to take this elbow and just tuck it in, okay? So if you have a point of contact here, on your fingers on the head like you should and you think about touching your elbow into your side what it's going to do biomechanically is it's going to pull your wrist up so if my if my elbows out my wrist goes down if I tuck my elbow in my wrist comes there we go sorry I keep on turning the wrong way if I tuck my elbow out my wrist comes down and my heel drops now I have a bad thumb angle. If I bring my elbow in, my heel naturally comes up and it doesn't create any tension in my hand. Okay, so just a couple little tricks might help you get into a good hand position.